Let's check and see if they're still unloading us. Red light, ah, dadgummit. Well, I guess we got time to kick back and catch another great episode of The Trucker's Table. So don't go nowhere, let's get started. Well, we made it here to Richmond to pick up our load. We've already checked in, dropped our piece of crap empty, getting us a newer model trailer loaded going back. Good trailer. Only gonna have it 36 hours, but we've already got a dilemma. Uh, let me show you real quick. That was my crowbar. All right, see this? It won't go up. It won't go up over. There's too much tension on it. I can't get it out of the cradle. So, I'm gonna have to take my crowbar and try to pry it up out of the cradle. Ooh, I think this is the first time this has ever happened. I've had the handle be pressed up against the, uh, the, uh, the, the trailer where you couldn't get it down, but I've never had it where you couldn't get it up. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna put this down here. And let's see, there you go. That's a good view. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get it. Uh, almost. Alright, let's try it this way. Well, we have really screwed ourselves up this time. Ooh. Well, now that we know that bends pretty easy, why don't we just try to bend that out? We'll take our hammer and straighten that back up and we'll be good to go. That's why you always bring these crazy tools with you because you never know when you're gonna need them. I'm give out. We'll talk to y'all more little bit. So we got our tandems up. For some reason, there's more seals back here. We first just have the one drop. So let's see, look at that paddle on that. You reckon somebody could get hurt with that? Look at that. Sharp as a needle. All right, let's see what this is all about. Uh, something to do with New Jersey. Oh, this is a bunch of cabinets. So this is from a previous load. Those seals and everything. That's from a previous load. Anyway, the Bissell vacuum wash. I think this is what my wife wants. She had said something about this. You'll have to comment below, baby. Tell me, is this the one that you were thinking about? The vacuum and wash Bissell engineer for homes with pets. That would be us. We have four. But uh, we got the old two before. I'll take the two before. I wouldn't mind having that. That's a good two before. And then it's got the thing on the side, those black things that we hate. Whew. But as you can tell, it's a new trailer. It's a good trailer. So uh, whew. we're going to get this loaded up. I think it's 27,000 pounds. Check out the paddle up there on top. Can you see it? Right up there, right there. It's almost touching the roof of the trailer. They're gonna have fun getting that one out, ain't they? I think it's a live unload too for us. So, we'll see. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and seal her up. And we gotta put the seal on. Of course, I left that in the truck, so I gotta run back and get it. And uh, we're gonna start heading towards Douglas, Georgia. I mapped it out. I might be able to make it there in nine hours. 
I think that's about how much time I got left on my clock. I have to double check. Whew. We're gonna try to make it there and find somewhere to park, do our break there, and be ready to go tomorrow afternoon when it's time to get unloaded. But we'll do some more video in between now and then, so y'all hang around, don't go nowhere. All right. All right, we made it to Douglas, Georgia. Already went inside and checked in. Uh, we're going into door 97 over here. Just got a slot of tandems. Put the seal in the back of the trailer. Unhook, dolly down, all that good stuff. Go park in the holding area and they'll give us a call when they're ready for us uh, to come inside and pick up our paperwork. So let's see if we can get this old seal broke. Uh, yeah, all right. That was easy peasy. Now let's hope the vacuum cleaners don't fall out on us. <laughs> Woo, it's full all the way to the back door. Look at that. Ah, right, there we go. All right. Yeah, this is the only thing about Walmart. It can be uh, aggravating having to drop your trailer and bob tail to the holding area. So, you know, that thing's still sticking out. See it? That could do some serious damage. Hopefully, they'll be picking it up with a forklift and not with their hands. <laughs> but yeah, I told my wife I sent her a picture of what we're hauling so we can get a better look at it. The Bissell. Yeah, she's wanting to get one of these for the house. We have a lot of um, non-carpet floors, so we thought it might work out good there at the house. But uh, anyway, ah. we're gonna see if we can't get out of here or get back in. There's another Landstar. Let's see if we can get a picture of him. Hold on. Say, <laughs> so, hey, buddy, how's it going? <laughs> you are on the trucker stable. <laughs> hey, fart knocker, what you doing in my seat? You can't drive. You gonna back it in? Are you gonna back it in? No? Well, I'm gonna have to do it then. Move over. <laughs> All right. Let's take this baby up and let's go flying around and see what it looks like here in Douglas, Georgia at the Walmart Distribution Center. You'll notice, uh, if you've ever been to one of these distribution centers, they're set up similar to each other. This distribution center here, you can look at it um, when you're looking around, like at the roof, uh, the, the, the structure of the building, the materials it's made out of, and everything else. You can tell that this is an older distribution center. Beautiful pond in the back back here. Nice little pond. I like to have a pond about like that in my backyard. That'd be nice. Throw a few fish in there. All right, so over here we have, I guess this is an overflow lot where they put uh, excess trailers or ones they don't use as often. Uh, they even got them lined up all the way around the building around here. Um, there's a little access road that leads around. Some more junk trailers back here. Uh, and then there's the employee parking lot. And then out here, there's the employee parking lot right there, and there's the front of the building where the employees go in. Uh, probably the business offices and stuff are there in the front. More trailers along the side here. Uh, the majority of the trailers that they use on a regular basis, they keep right here in the middle where they're easy to access and uh, they don't have as far to go. Uh, and, you, and then right here is the guard shack, right there in the middle, and that's where you come in at. And there's another little overflow lot over there. Uh, and we swing back around where the pond is. So we've made a complete loop around the uh, the building where all the different trailers and stuff are parked. And um, this is typical right here for Georgia, though. Ponds, beautiful trees. Um, so this is typical of Georgia right there. A little bit of a swampy thing. But if you see all these trailers out here now, see this is a wash bay and a little maintenance area right here in the back. And then we go on up here and you see more trailers in the middle. And like I said, the ones here in the middle um, are the ones that they use the most. Uh, they're probably changing those around pretty regular. And they had, I think I want to say I counted at least three yard jockeys. But I have seen at some Walmart distribution centers way, way more uh, yard jockeys than that. But they had at least three that were working 
uh, when I was there. And uh, so, and then when we're coming back down, if you look to the right of the screen, that's where we came in at right there on that road, uh, coming in off the main highway. Uh, I think that's Highway 206. Um, I think it was around uh, Douglas, Georgia there. Uh, and then, like I said, this is just the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, little businesses, gas stations, and stuff like that around the area. Yeah, you can get a good look at it here. Yeah, this is the side of the building. This is uh, to the left is the back of the building. To the front is the right is the uh, to, to the right is the front of the building. And if you look right in here, if you look right up against the building. Uh, right in here you'll, is where our trailer is. We dropped our trailer right in here. And so I came up with a cool idea. And uh, we'll try it out in a minute. Okay, right here is where we're parked in the little bobtail area. There we are right there. So we're going to circle around. You can see all the trailers and stuff that are dropped. It's funny how some of them uh, have different roof color tops. Now you see where he's lining up right there. He's getting ready to back that trailer in well where he's backing that trailer in just back this side of it is where our trailer is parked uh we're backed in the door 97 and 97 where he's backing in right now is probably in the low 100s somewhere between 100 and 110 and right back in here is where our trailer is amongst these trailers here um so what we're going to do in a minute when we we're going to swing the drone around and uh, I came up with this idea and I'll show you in just a minute uh, what my idea was now back further here are a lot of the pup trailers you see them right there all those pup trailers they kind of keep those in that area and then they have the other ones see there goes the yard jockey just dropped their trailer and he's leaving so we'll follow him down but you can see barely make it out there was our trailer right there I'm trying to shorten this so it's not too long because I did about 20 minutes of video, but I know y'all don't want to see 20 minutes of a uh, of video. All right, so now we're hovered right over top of where our trailer is, and there's a gap right here. You see the gap? Well, to the left of the gap is, is our trailer, and that's door 97. Where the gap is, is door 98. So you can see the land star on the side of the trailer right there. That's our trailer. So here's my idea i thought i'm gonna go over there and i'm gonna hover down next to where my trailer is and i'm gonna look at the um the red green dock light and see if they've started unloading me yet because if there's a red light then there's a good chance they've already started unloading me so let's look and see if we can see if the light is red or green because if it's green that means they haven't started unloading me yet but if it's red then they probably have. All right, so here we go. Let's get, see if we can get a closer look. Let's see. Yeah, there's a trailer. And you can see the empty dock space. Up, oh, red light, red light, red light. All right. That means we are getting loaded. And in case you couldn't see, right there's the red light where the little arrow is pointing. All right, let's take it back up and head back over to where we're parked at. So now we're headed back over to where the bobtail area is. You can see it uh, just past where that yard jockey is back in that trailer in that right there. And there's more trailers in the center. This gives you a more open wide so you can see. And, and and if you've been to many many of these Walmart distribution centers, you will notice that this one here is a little bit on the smaller side compared to how big some of them are. But right here is where we are, and then straight across from where we're parked, over there to the right, you see that yard jockey part. That's where you go in at to check in and give your paperwork. And the truck that's parked here next to the uh, the pole barn shelter thing, that dark colored truck, that's that Landstar that we saw before. And then there we are. There's one guy always facing the opposite direction than everybody else. But there we are, right next to an old Schneider truck. Me and a duck man sitting there in the old Volvo. All right. <laughs> yeah, you see they got pallets and boxes and other junk in the back of some of the other trailers. There it is. There's the entrance right over there where the thing was. So we're going to call it a day. 
I hope you enjoyed the flight. What you thinking, that that? Thinking, where the heck are we at? <laughs> uh, ooh, where are we? No signs around here. Where are they? Well, I'll give you a little hint. We are west of Nashville. Looks like he found him something to do. <laughs> yeah, we are west of Nashville in a little bitty place called Kingston or Kingston Springs or something like that at the Petro, the Petro, uh, west of Nashville. Uh, we made it through there like never slowed down. 70 miles an hour, zoom, right through Nashville. <laughs> and uh, we left uh, Candler, C A N D L E R, Candler, uh, North Carolina. We stayed over at the TA and uh, we left there. Uh, and I want to say, I want to say it was a little after 1 a.m., somewhere in there. Anyway, we, uh, we made it over here just before 6 a.m. We had four hours and 40 minutes of drive time, and we made it in four hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> so uh, we got over here, and uh, we're going to do a at least a two-hour break, and I'll look and see if I got my hours back. And if I did, then we're going to book it. If we don't, I may have to hang around for a three-hour break. I'm not sure, because I only did a seven-hour break over in... Um, Candler, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but hopefully, I can get by with a two-hour break. But if I have to do a three, I have to do a three. But uh, as soon as we get get my hours back, we're gonna haul butt, try to get over to uh, Jonesboro, and uh, make our delivery. Our appointment time was set for 7 a.m. <laughs> Not even gonna be close. So, uh, we had a rough day yesterday. Um, it started with being laid over for six hours at Walmart. Ah, that killed us. And then we get to Swainsboro and we pick up that load and it's all jacked up. We're supposed to have three stops and only had two. And then they had the second stop mixed in with the third stop. Even had it mislabeled as third stop. And I didn't notice it until I got to my final stop and then I seen it and I had to drive all the way back to Columbia. That's what killed me. That little bit of time, if I'd had that little bit of time, I could have made it to Knoxville, at least to Knoxville and uh, been done my break and then be able to drive straight on over to, without stopping, all the way straight through to uh, Jonesboro. But because I couldn't, I had to take three gun pieces back. And it just, <laughs> I was mad as fire, boy. That screwed up everything. But here's the good news. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll get back enough hours. I can make it to where I got to deliver and make it to Memphis to pick up. As long as I can make it to Memphis to pick up, I'm good. I just need enough hours to make it to Memphis to pick up. If I can make it there and get picked up, we're all good. <laughs> if I can't drive another mile, as long as I can make it there and get picked up, we're good to go. And because uh, I have to pick it up, I don't know if I have to pick it up Thursday. I mean, they may would let me push it back to Friday morning, but I'm not sure. But anyway, if, as long as we get picked up, we do our break, we drive straight through the Lake Park, deliver straight to the house. So, uh, Hopefully we'll be home sometime Friday. I was hoping for Friday morning, but now it's looking more like Friday afternoon. Whew. So anyway, it's just been a screwed up day. And then we're on our way to Candler, right? And I had plan originally planned before I had to go back to Columbia, I was gonna stop off in Spartanburg up there in Duncan and get fuel at the TA where it's cheap. Well, that threw my whole plan out of whack. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna just go on to Candler, pick up, and then I'll get fuel when I stop there at the TA in Candler. Well, I get over near Clinton, South Carolina, and the truck starts acting funny, man. Making funny sounds, doing funny stuff. So I whipped into the rest area right there before we get to the pilot in Clinton, South Carolina. 
and uh, got out, checked my, looked under the hood, and there wasn't no fuel in the fuel globe. You got this little globe. I'll show you a picture right here. Here's the picture of it. Um, there's no, uh, there's supposed to be fuel. See how there's fuel in this one? There's, there's no, when I opened the globe and looked at it, there was no fuel. And uh, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> so I fiddled with it a little bit and tried and uh, let some air get in there. And then, cause that top cap, black cap screwed off and uh, screwed it back on and everything that crumped back up and it sounded like it was doing okay. And um, so I, I was only about 10 more miles down the road to that pilot there in Clinton. I made it there and just barely got onto the fuel island, you know. And I got out to check it and you can see all kind of bubbles. It was just act, acting real funny, you know. And I was swerving the truck back and forth like this because I checked my fuel tanks and it, it didn't look like there was any fuel in the passenger side tank, but it looked like the the the, uh, the driver's side looked like it had about four or five inches in the bottom of the tank, you know. So I think my fuel gauge is, is not working right because it was showing me a half a tank of fuel. So anyway, uh, put fuel in the truck there at the pilot, and then it, w it just cut off. It wouldn't even crank. And um, so I, I was texting my buddy Clint, uh, Bar uh, Paramount Truck Service in Highport, North Carolina, and uh, trying to figure out what was going on, you know. I played him some video of it making that funny sound and stuff. And uh, he, he said, oh, man, that don't sound good. And uh, so I poured fuel in the globe, fill it up. So the globe was full, had plenty of fuel in it, but it still wouldn't crank. And uh, overheated the starter. I had to sit there and let it cool a little bit, let the batteries charge back up using the, um, the uh, a, uh, APU. And then uh, I thought about it, and I'm like, well, there's two fuel filters. I only put fuel in one. So let me prime the other one. There's a little, prime, little pump. You, uh, here's a picture of what, the, uh, what it looks like. It's, it's spring loaded, so you have to pump it and pump it. I asked him, I said, how many times I got I to gotta pump it? He said, pump it till it, it's hard to push down. So I kept pumping it, pumping it, pumping it, and it got hard to push down. I pushed it down, put a little red cap over it, and uh, got in there, fired right up. Never missed a beat, purring like a cat. And I thought, I, I think that's all. I thought that's what my problem was. <laughs> I was out of fuel, so my fuel gauge. I got to get that addressed. But uh, so uh, I had enough fuel to make it up to Canada to get picked up. Uh, did I drop and hook? Uh, picked up the load, load, uh, load. It was a drop and hook. Made it over to the TA, and uh, before we left to head over here, I went ahead and put another 80 gallons in it to make sure I'd have plenty to get to. Uh, to Jonesboro and back down to West Memphis. And then when I get back down to West Memphis, I'll probably go ahead and fill her on up real good right there. And then that'll get me on down to the house. And uh, I mean, we should be good. Hopefully that was it. I need to get a PM done on the truck too. So we'll see. I need to find a speed coach, what I want to do. Get it, I want to get, I want to try to do it different. I want, I've been doing it in the TA and I ain't been really all that satisfied. So I'm thinking about trying speed coach go back to them maybe do it once or twice so we'll see get your butt back over here way out to the bottom highway anyway we're gonna go ahead and end the video here i know it's a day late and i apologize i'm so sorry it's just yesterday was the worst day i've had i mean having to drive back 95 miles to take three daggum windows i was so mad so all that time i wasted all the time i wasted at walmart and then the truck, I thought the truck had broke down on me. It's just been a rough, <laughs> a rough day. So I just wasn't able to get the video out. And, you know, I was just, I was so damn tired, man. I got parked last night. I, I couldn't, if I tried to edit the video, I would have never made it. I would have fell asleep. But so I didn't even eat dinner. My head hit the pillow. I was sound asleep. <laughs> I slept like a rock, man. I slept hard for about five hours. And I got up and started watching my, uh, my ELD, so I knew as soon as I got my hours back, I could go. I already had my coffee ready to go and everything. So, anyway, I apologize. I know I don't normally upload videos on Thursday, but maybe we'll do something special for Friday. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a live feed or something. I don't know. I'll, uh, if you would, look on my uh, YouTube page. Uh, you'll see a community page, a little community uh, link or whatever. If you uh, click on that community uh, you'll be able to see um, or make sure 
in the in the uh, when you're scrolling through uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, uh, YouTube, and I'll post something in the community about uh, if we're going to do a live feed or not, and I'll and I'll try to put it out uh, somehow or another on social media or something, letting you know uh, if we're going to be able to do one, and I'll give you adv as much advance advance notice as I can. <laughs> so, but anyway. Uh, hope you enjoyed the drone footage in this one. Um, this is uh, we we did the uh, the drone footage of Walmart and everything. So uh, that was cool as heck, wasn't it? <laughs> I love the drone. It saved me today too, man, because I turned in. I'd never been to that place in Canada, and I turned in the wrong entrance, and it was for cars only, and there was nowhere to turn around. I had to back back out into traffic, blind side back out, couldn't see what I was doing. So I put that drone up in the air, and I was watching my blind side with the camera and uh on the drone and uh watching and as soon as traffic cleared i could see the other direction shoot whip back out and uh once i got out there you know then people could see me they slowed down and waited for me to get out but uh it saved my butt man because if it hadn't been i don't know what i would have done you know i would have had to wait for somebody that was leaving or whatever and have them go out there and block traffic for me or something but with the drone i was able to watch for traffic coming in the other direction and then i just uh had to drive around to the back of the building so I just flew the drone once I got back there because uh, I was, you know, it's within a half mile range. So, I mean, it's got a two mile range, but I was real, really close. So I just had it, I just flew it over the building back there to where I was at and uh, landed it back there by where I was at and put it away. But uh, yeah, it saved my butt. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank y'all all so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. You peoples are the best. And if you're first time watcher, viewer, second, third time, whatever, and you're not subscribed yet, go down here and click where it says subscribe and then click on the little bell icon. You'll be notified every time we upload a video. Hope everybody had a great hump day so we didn't get the video out on time, but hump day, woo -hoo! <laughs> But uh, anyway, hope everybody had a great one. And uh, like I said, uh, Thank you so much for watching and everything. I really appreciate it. We will see y'all again soon. It'll either be live or video, I promise you. But we'll get something out, okay? All right. Y'all have a great day. Stay safe and stay cold. Don't stay cold. Stay warm. Stay warm. Keep your hands in your thing. Stay warm, all right? Thanks again. And don't forget, no matter how bad those days get, like the one yesterday, <laughs> we don't give up, right? We don't give up. We keep punching. <laughs>